So maybe you've just started a consulting business, maybe you're thinking of starting your own consulting business. What do you think is the number one skill that you need to be successful? That's what we're talking about this week. Okay, so if you have just started a consulting business, maybe you've been you know, consulting for a little while with your own business, maybe you're thinking about starting a consulting business, what's the number one skill that you need? And I'm about to tell you what it isn't, the technical expertise in your field of consulting. Absolutely not. The number one skill is sales. And I'm gonna step through a few important things for you to think about in terms of sales. So first of all, let me say to you, when I say sales, just think for a moment. What kind of thoughts or emotions does that conjure up? Because it's very interesting how some people react to it. When I say sales, are you thinking of sleazy used car salesmen? Are you thinking of pe people selling stuff at your front door? Or are you thinking of the most amazing, helpful salesperson in a store that you went into who bent over backwards to help you and the whole experience was really good. You see, it conjures up so many different things. And a lot of small business owners, one, hate sales. You know, they try and they're sort of averse to the whole sales process and they, they think it feels grubby. Get that right out of your head now because if you're starting a consulting business and you're thinking about sales like that, forget it you ain't gonna even get off the ground. You have to enjoy sales. You have to enjoy it, you have to be good at it. So let's just talk about it for a little while. So when you're selling consulting services, you're not that sleazy type salesperson trying to sell a used car. And hey, <laughs> I shouldn't decry used car salespeople because I've met some really great ones. But it's kind of the image that it conjures up, isn't it? Sleazy, trying to sell you something at any cost. You know, That is not what consulting sales is about. It's consultative selling. And what does that mean? It means that you're having a conversation with someone who potentially could be a client. It means you're listening to their issues. It's a little bit like a doctor at times. You're listening to what their challenges are. You're thinking about what some of the solutions might be. You're not voicing them yet because you, know, you might be jumping the gun, but you're trying to assess whether you can help that person or not. But you know, someone when I first got into uh, consulting, a very wise guy who's unfortunately lo no longer with us anymore, told me, Rob, when you're in consulting sales, there's a reason you've got two ears and one mouth. <laughs> you use them in that proportion. Um, and I've seen so many people screw up a sales call and consulting because they talk too much. Okay, really good salespeople listen. You listen, you're showing empathy to the client, you're, you're really trying to understand their issues and working out whether there's an opportunity for you to help them or not. So it's about style. The other key thing that I think you need to get your head around, particularly if you're starting your own business in consulting, you've got to be convinced. And it's not about convincing yourself. You've got to know deep down that the consulting services you provide are valuable. If you don't feel that the services that you're offering your clients are valuable to the client, that they're going to be beneficial to the client, if you don't feel that deep down inside, you shouldn't be consulting. You shouldn't be selling your consulting services because that's just dishonest. And to be honest, that's, that's how you should approach sales. You, you, you should approach sales with the viewpoint that whatever you're consulting in, your assistance is going to help them. And it's going to help them overcome an obstacle. It's going to help them um, maybe personally develop. It's going to help them develop their business. And, and if you don't honestly feel that, then you shouldn't be selling those services. So sales is not grubby. It's actually a little bit, for consultants at least, it's a little bit like being a teacher, a coach. Um, it's helping people, genuinely wanting to help people. And if that comes through in your interaction with potential clients, you're going to do really well. I can remember, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell a story about a, uh, one of our consultants many years ago who hated selling. <laughs> and I'd say to him, if he's watching this, <laughs> it's, it's you, Bob. Um, and one day I said to him, um, can you come and meet a potential client with me, Bob? And he went, is this a sales call? I went, no, 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 of course not. 
because he hated selling. He had this total aversion like a lot of people, you know, he thought, no, it's sleazy and I'm not good at it. And anyway, we went along to talk to this potential client. He says, not a sales call, is it? No, 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 we're gonna have a coffee with this prospect and we're gonna understand a little bit about their business. So let me tell you how the meeting unfolded. And our sales meetings are always like this. So we're having a coffee with this uh, senior executive in this business and he's telling us about his challenge and I consult in supply chain and logistics. And it was all about managing their inventory and how they were having problems and they were running out of stock and all this kind of stuff. And we're listening, listening, listening. And it's, this is, it, I don't want this to sound manipulative. It's not. This is just how you do it. You listen and find out, you know, what's going on in the business. Show a bit of empathy, you know, try to understand what the issues are and, and what this poor guy's trying to deal with. And anyway, as we're going through the conversation, he's talking about their forecasting systems and things like that. And I said, Bob, you've, you've helped quite a few companies do that, haven't you? How, how do you go about that? And, and Bob's very proud of what he does. You know, he, he loves working with clients. And he, he said, oh, you know, generally what I do is, you know, we'll, we'll have a look at this and then we'll go through two or three steps. And said, you know, quite often the problem is, you know, this, this and this. Um, and, and that's not too hard to fix. And then we go through and we do this and... You know, generally um, we end up with a really good result, you know, and then the conversation went on a bit and uh, and the client said, that's great. Um, I'll give you a call later, the prospect rather. And we're in the car going back to the office and Bob turns around to me and says, that was a sales call, wasn't it? <laughs> I said, Bob, it was a coffee with a prospect and you did very well. <laughs> and of course, the, uh, the prospect called me and said, yeah, I quite like the approach that Bob mentioned. And... Uh, could you put a proposal into us to, to assist us you know, in that, in that way? And, and we won the work. And Bob did the work and he loved it. So what's the, what's the purpose behind that sort of story and, and some of the other comments I'm making? First of all, you've got to be interested and genuinely you know, have the client's interests at heart and enjoy the sales process. Yeah, you've got to enjoy it. You've got to feel that you're doing good that you really are helping your clients, you know, and if you can't feel that, don't, then don't be doing it. Um, and you've got to brush up those skills. And, and look, I don't think it's about going to sales courses and I, I don't think it's about, you know, finding some great guru on YouTube, who, you know, who says, sell me this pen, you know. I mean, there's a lot of BS out there, to be honest. The best way to learn sales is to go on sales calls with someone who's really good at it, effective at it. Um, and I, I do that with a lot of uh, the new staff who join our consulting business. Uh, and they come along with me. And you know what they say very generally? We'll do two or three sales calls. And they say, am I adding much value? I mean, I, I don't get to say much. And I said, don't worry, just sit and observe. And you know, that happened to me 25 years ago when I first stopped, got, got into consulting. My MD at the time said, Rob, you come along with me. You know, we're going to do some sales calls together. And, and after a few calls, I said, Mark, I don't feel like I'm adding much value on these calls, mate. And he said, doesn't matter. He said, just absorb the process, see how I do it, see how we handle different things. And he said, and you'll get it. And, and after a while I did. And I really enjoy selling now. So uh, just a few tips on sales, rambled a bit. I'm sorry about that. But I'm gonna mention one more thing before we finish. And I think I've got a book summary for you. I'll, I'll dig it out. If I have, I'll put a link down below. It's, uh, it's either The Goal or The Goal Revisited. Fantastic business book. And one of the things that the author highlights in that, and I see this so often, is that a great technician, uh, uh, someone who's really good technically at doing something, will start their own business and utterly fail because they don't understand the difference between a good technician and being a good business owner, and an element of that is sales, being good at sales and marketing and all of the other things as well. The examples he talks about in the book is a, a, a guy who's a fantastic baker opens a bakery and doesn't know how to run a bakery shop. He's a baker. You know, um, I think a lady who's, who is a fantastic hairdresser opens a hair salon and it doesn't work because she's great at doing the hair, but not at running the business, the sales, the marketing and client management and so on. If you're starting your own consulting business, don't be that person. You've got to have all of those rounded skills, particularly in the early stages. You've got to be able to sell number one, number one skill. Because if you can't sell your services, you'll fail right out of the gate. All the other stuff's important, you know, the technical skills and so on. But if you can't 
if you can't subtly, in the right way, collaboratively, consultatively, if you can't promote your services to potential clients well enough that they want to buy your services, you're dead in the water. Okay, so that's the number one skill for consultants. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions on that, do comment down below. I'd love to get questions. Uh, if you're new to the channel, maybe think about subscribing. If you hit the bell, you'll get notified every time we have a new video coming out. And they come out every week on a Tuesday. So thanks, thanks for watching and learn to love sales. <laughs> See you next week.